this week I've been sharing with you some authors whose words have helped me get through tough times, uh, they, like 2020. Um, these writers offer the kind of insight we can all use as we start 2021 on the right foot. So one of those is fellow Texan Brene Brown, who's published five New York Times bestsellers. I mean, one topic she brilliantly tackles is self-care. She writes, daring to set boundaries is about having the courage to love ourselves, even when we risk disappointing others. Is, have you ever gone to church, like you hadn't been in a while, then you show up and you're like, oh, snap, that was for me. <laughs> like, you're, you're like, God is definitely talking to me right now. Yeah, that's like that quote, yeah. All right, well, that powerful concept doesn't just resonate big with me. We actually have someone with us who says it summarizes her 2020. Meet Logan, everybody. <laughs> What's up, Logan? <laughs> Hi, Kelly. How are you? I'm not as good as your <laughs> lips right now. I love that color. It's so pretty. Um, <laughs> Thank so, you, Kelly. Oh, yeah, you look so cute. Um, well, you say that Thank that you. quote helped you in the past, um, in this past year more than ever, right? Definitely. I mean, for years, I was available for everyone, family, friends, you know, co-workers, you know, whatever they needed to talk about, I was always there. But you know, meanwhile, I couldn't get anything done. I was missing deadlines at work. I was like, okay, something has to change. So I love Brene. I've read Gifts of Imperfections. I've read Darren Greatly. And when she talked about boundaries in an interview, I was like, okay, this is it. She said, knowing what's okay and what's not okay. That's how you implement your boundaries. Yeah. And it's a, it's a really hard thing to develop. If you are a people pleaser, it is a, like, I mean, I've heard from other people. Yeah. I'm great at it. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> what, was it hard to set those boundaries? Like, was it, cause you feel, I always feel mean, even though you're not being mean, but you, you feel like you're letting someone down and is it, was it hard for you to really start, you know, taking the advice and actually living it? Um, for the people who are not going to respect your boundaries, they're going to fall off anyway. And the people that you care about, you can just say, hey, you know, this is what I told my family. I said, I love you, but from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m., I'm going to be working on something. So my phone is going to be on do not disturb. And if there's any missed calls or any missed messages, if there was an emergency, I reply to the message. And then I had to implement my own personal boundary, you know, by not replying, even if I really want to. Because what I really learned is people only, you know, listen to your actions. They don't listen to your words. Oh, fine. <laughs> it's so hard. <laughs> Um, great news, everybody. Brene Brown is actually here with practical words of wisdom we can all use to start off 2021 right. Um, I am so excited to get to talk to her. What's up, everybody? I'm back with Tim Allen and Mary Mauser. Give it up. Give it up. Um, all right, y'all. Well, this week we are celebrating the start of 2021 and maybe more importantly, the end of 2020. Um, we are saying, well, that sucked. Moving on. Well, that sucked. Every time, I love it. <laughs> My next guest is a five-time, five-time New York Times bestseller whose words have inspired millions of people far and wide, including myself. Um, in fact, I was reading her book, uh, The Gifts of Imperfection, this summer, and tweeted this at one o'clock in the morning. No joke, I could not put the book down. And I said, up late reading some Brene Brown, and she is just serving up some slap you in the face honesty in regard to shame and boundaries. Good Lord, it's like, get out of my head, lady. But I'm absolutely thrilled she's joining us today. Please, everyone, say hi to Brene Brown! What's up, girl? Hi! Hello! Um, meet Hello. Mary and meet Tim. Hi. Hi, Mary. Hi, Tim. All right. Well, hey, Brene, I mean, 2020 was hard on all of us. It doesn't matter who you are. Relatively speaking, in everyone's life, everyone kind of had a hard 2020 and just a hard time navigating it. What was your biggest challenge? I was, I want to ask this question to people. I think that they've got all their stuff figured out, for lack of a better word. Um, you know, wh what was your challenge? I'm definitely the wrong person to be talking to if you're looking for someone who's got their stuff figured out. Um, <laughs> I, for, yeah, for me, um, I have to say it was probably one of the hardest seasons of my 30-year marriage. Mm -hmm. Um, I think parenting was every decision we made was like a NASA DEF CON five cost benefit risk analysis. Um, mm -hmm. it was hard and 
One of the things that I don't think we understood completely is that we're not wired neurobiologically for a crisis that lasts that long. Like we can do, you know, we have enough adrenaline, we have enough kind of reserve to push through most of the crises that we face. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm in Houston, so, you know, hurricanes, but we're not wired for a nine month. We just, we we're depleted, we're weary, we wear out. And then we have to consciously be aware of our choices or we turn into not our best selves. Amen. And we saw a lot of that, I think, in 2020. Yeah, no, amen. But earlier, Logan told us um, Brene's definition of boundaries changed her life. And boundaries, I'm going to be honest with you, are not my forte. Um, <laughs> uh, Brene, how is giving less of your time considered generous? Because how do I sell that to people is my question. <laughs> 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 okay, so this is the weirdest part of our research. So early on, maybe 10 years in, I had this stack of data and I was like, these are the most compassionate people I've ever come across. I mean, we were interviewing like monks. We were interviewing really compassionate people. And so we asked ourselves, what do these folks have in common? And I mean, we're talking about close to 500,000 pieces of data over 20 years now. And we're like, what are the, and I thought the answer was going to be spirituality, like compassionate people have spirituality in common. But I was wrong. The answer is the most compassionate people that we have interviewed and studied over the last 20 years are the most boundaried. And so what I've learned is that boundaries are not, you know, as someone who studies vulnerability, I would say boundaries are not a wall or a moat around your heart. They are the path to self-respect. Boundaries are saying that I choose self-love and self-respect over what you think of me or the possibility of disappointing you. And how this ties to generosity in the research is really interesting. And here's, here's the thing. We're not generous and kind to people who are walking all over us. Yeah. I mean, Tim... Tim, are you good at boundaries? I've been seeing him shake his head. He's like, <laughs> it depends. And here's my problem is I can do it in work. I can set boundaries immediately. It comes off as being kind of angry sometimes when I just, that's it. I don't want to do this anymore. I do. Not, I don't want this. When I get around my, my mother, I'm finally to that point. I no longer, this is not okay with me. I love you. I'm your son. I'll do whatever, but I'm not, that, I'm not a, 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 a footstool or whatever I came up with. There are people in my life that I'm unable. I'm virtually powerless. I get taken advantage of. There's no boundaries. I walk away in my world. I get resentful. And I was going to say, that's yeah. That's poison for me. And then resentment sets in. Me too. And then I'm like, then I'm mad you know, at myself. I, I, my kid, I said to my kid, she goes, are you, you're doing it now. And I said, you know what? There's sometimes there's certain kids like a dirty diaper because it, it's smelly and warm, but at least it's theirs. And in, in my case, sometimes I like sitting in resentment. There's something about it that oh. I like that's mm. to be looked at. And oh. I look at that sometimes. I let people take advantage of me. And underneath, I'm, I'm a terrorist. I'll, get, I'll show them, but it won't be now. It might be tomorrow. But I, <laughs> I, 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 I take that person's You're like page and leave their dog food <laughs> in my yard. I was going to say, I just oh get passive aggressive. <laughs> No, here's my thing. I'm like you too, but I don't want to be, I don't like living in resentment, but I, but here's the thing. I think that also you can't really, like I feel in my own whatever path journey, LA word I want to use, um, whatever my own thing is that I, if you can't really resent the person, if you're allowing it to happen, like you can't, exactly. And so that's the thing. It's kind of your fault. It's my fault, you know, and that's the hard thing, though. But then it comes into shame. Then it comes into guilt. And then it's just like, Jesus, there's not enough time in this show. Um, So it's it's just there's there's a lot. There's a lot that goes into it. It's such a bigger conversation. But I I really do implore that everybody it's it's the 10th anniversary um, of Brene's book, The Gifts of Imperfection. It's the one I tweeted about. She's got a ton of books you can get. This is the one that really just hit home for me whenever I really needed it. Um, But I highly recommend you read it and implement it into your lives. Uh, Be sure to check out her podcast, Unlocking Us.